everyone, and welcome back to the Dr. Music Podcast, where today I am honored to have sitting in with me, Mr. Gene Hoagland. Uh, he is often called the Atomic Clock for his impeccable timing and precision on the drum kit. Gene is highly sought after and often considered to be one of the greatest drummers in metal. He has been a member of, here we go, take a deep breath, Dark Angel, <laughs> Death Clock, Strapping Young Lad, Testament, death, many more. Uh, he has been called upon to take the drum throne on a moment's notice, sometimes less than a moment, uh, for for so many bands, learning that material in a matter of hours sometimes. Uh, Anthrax, Opeth, uh, and many more there as well. Uh, Gene is about to go on tour with Death to All, a tribute to the band Death. Uh, he's going to tell us all about the band and all about the tour and what he's got going on. Gene, thank you so much for being here, man. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, man. Uh, it's a complete honor. Uh, so much music from you, man, uh, over the years. It's uh, it's great. You keep busy, don't you? Absolutely. You know, it's like I, I am definitely the poster child for living one's dream because yeah. I was 11 years old when, when I figured out what I wanted to do. And then by the time I was like 13, I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely, this is, I want to be a, want to be a rock and roll drummer. want to be a heavy metal drummer. I want to tour the world. I just want to, I want to have a life in the music industry. And I said, uh, I said about to do it. I said out to do it when, when I was a teenager and I'm still here. So uh, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I've had a very blessed, charmed, fortunate life, and so there you go, man. Uh, it's it's so great, man. It's so great, <laughs> uh, and and you're giving us so much as fans. Uh, you know, there's so much material yeah. out there, man. So much great stuff you've done. Uh, let, let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. Uh, you know, the the first steps there. Um, you're doing lighting for Slayer. Uh, right. That's really early on. Uh, yeah. in, in your life. Um playing drums at sound checks and things like that. Um, you know, what kind of impact did that have on you? Uh, you know, seeing them and what they were doing, did that have a big impact on what you wanted to do with your career? Um, well, it, it, in a way it absolutely, you know, because I already knew what I wanted to do and that was just, kind of like this side thing like me being a light guy it was merely because at a slayer show uh their their light guy did not show up and tom just he came to me and you know we were pals and so you know i was always at all their shows and he's like hey gene you know can you do you think you could run that light board over there see that thing over there and i was like sure yeah you know it had eight buttons on it it was really <laughs> primitive about the size of an ipad kind of thing it was it was uh, pretty tiny little thing but you know that night i felt like god dang i'm the fifth member on that stage you know because i know the material i'm hitting all the right cues and all that kind of stuff and it wasn't much of a light show at the time but the next week same situation light guy didn't show up wasn't going to show up so tom's like hey man can you try this again and so from then on it was just showing up at this layer show walking right to the light board and doing my little thing and so and you know we were all pals at the time and i was i was helping dave with his double bass he was just starting to learn it at the time so i remember at the end of that tour um you know dave had asked me he's like hey man do you, do you think you know would you would you mind sticking with us and you know maybe being my 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 drum tutor i remember he used the term tutor and um, I was like, well, you know what, Dave, you know, it's a very, very kind offer. You know, it sounds amazing. However, you know, I'm 16. I'm, I ain't getting any younger. I want to start joining bands, you know, kind of thing. So, you know, I want, I want to do what you're doing. I want to be on stage and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, thank you for the very wonderful offer. However, I got to, I got to start making my way into this industry now. So, uh, and, you know, I was able to, wasn't too too much after that period where i ended up joining dark angel and uh 
you know, so things just started kind of, you know, just kind of taking off from there. So, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you know, and that's a, that's, that's a really, uh, you know, when you get Dave Lombardo, uh, you know, asking you to tutor him, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a tremendous, uh, you know, thing on your resume for sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, a couple of great, you know, br- groundbreaking drummers, uh, you and Dave for sure. Uh, Very cool. Yeah. Uh, tell me about Death to All. Uh, you were a member of Death uh, for mm-hmm. two or three years there, cut a couple of albums with them. Um, yeah. How does this band come together, and what inspired you to do the band? Well, back in 2011, I was. Um, that was the year that they did a re-release, a remastering, re-release of uh, Death's individual thought patterns album, and um, so I was, I was going out and doing a bunch of clinics, uh, drum clinics that were based on that record. I was, you know, really, you know, I was playing that whole album and telling stories and stuff about, you know, about the whole that my my era with Death kind of thing, mm-hmm. and um, it was it was pretty darn successful and a. Uh, a mutual friend of Sean Reinert's and myself came to us with the proposal, you know, came to me with the proposal and, and Sean as well. Like, you know, with that concept in mind, what would you think about, you know, do you think we could get the guys together to, you know, just go out and put a, put the band, you know, a band together and, and have guys from every era that we can get. And so we ended up having like seven ex death members in the very first death to all run and um it was it was great you know it was it was a good time and you know the the fans really enjoyed it you know and that's one thing that we started thinking was that you know chuck is no longer with us obviously but his music is you know why should we let the music disappear as well just because we don't have chuck a lot of folks, you know, love Chuck and love his music. We we all did. So, you know, let's let's pay tribute to the man. Make a night about Chuck and and have folks that hadn't seen Death in a number of years because by the time we did this, twenty eleven, you know, Death hadn't been a band since you know nineteen ninety eight, nineteen ninety nine kind of thing. So. It had been a number of years, and we had lost Chuck in two thousand one. So there were there were guys, you know, roughly our age that saw the band back in the day, and then there was a bunch of new young dudes that that discovered Death after you know after there was no Chuck was no longer with us, or after there was no longer Death itself. So um, it was a win win for everybody, and. To this day, there are still guys at the show that, uh, you know, they're yelling out, thank you for doing this. Or, yeah. you know, like yeah. guys have tears, you know, like hardened metal dudes. I remember those early shows, man, yeah. where, you know, hardened metal dudes with tears coming down their face because this is their favorite band. And they never thought they would ever have another opportunity to witness it, you know, face to face. And you've got, when it comes to the lineup, this is my, you know, like with, with Steve and Bobby, this is my personal dream lineup of death that I wish we could have gotten this together back in the day. And, you know, so this is it. We all really enjoy each other. We enjoy jamming the song. We love playing death music and we have a great time. And with the addition of Max Phelps as our fourth guy, I mean, he he takes he wow. takes the gig seriously and he does an amazing job at it and it's just it's a good time it's a great night you know like don't be the person that gets the phone call from all your friends the next day going where were you you know god you missed a great night jesus you know yep. don't be that person seriously yeah it's man good. I, yeah, I didn't get a chance to see the band back in the day and and you know listening to the records you there there are different eras of death and they all sound slightly different even though right. is that staple 
Um, and I would completely agree. Uh, Steve is just a monster. Steve DiGiorgio on bass is just, I mean, ridiculously great. Um, you know, and you guys as a rhythm section, man, oh man, it is just amazing. Uh, you know, and Bobby, this is, this, it really is. Uh, just a tremendous you guys i feel like you can do anything um you know I it, do too. yeah just anything in that in the death catalog for sure uh you know you, you guys are so in tune with with that sound and i think that's what's so impressive with max is i think the the i feel anyway that when i listen to it um chuck's approach has changed from the first few albums of course. To, yeah, to definitely to when you were in the band, um, there's a there's a different um, approach to it, uh, and he nails that. He nails each each approach. Uh, you know, we you know, mm -hmm. Max just tunes into what Chuck was doing, and like becomes him. Uh, so it's really uh, it's really great, man. Uh, it's it's a, such a great right. tribute to Chuck and the death music very cool well thank you for that you know it's like that's yeah. it's it's you know something that's important another part of death's legacy that that is important to us or, or it's important for us to represent the entire death legacy you know legacy of death's music you know and play song from the first album all the way to the to the to the final record you know um we don't concentrate on like well you know I played on individual and symbolic and see if you played on human and individual and, you know, Bob, you play on symbolic. So let's just play those, those two albums right there, those three records. That's that, that does the fans a disservice. I think, you know, Oh, you got a kitty. That's fun. I thought oh, yeah. So. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> we got yeah. animal kingdom over here. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Uh, yeah. But yeah. So, you know, I mean, just, just, you know, having, because the death fan, like if you were a fan of the band, that means that you evolved with the band, you know, yeah. like your, your yeah. musical tastes probably evolved as well to where, you know, we were all young, hardcore, you know, teenagers. And so mm -hmm. albums like Scream, Bloody Gore and Leprosy and, right. you know, and then as, as we all got a little bit older and, and diverse in our tastes, you know, death was able to evolve in, in, in in many ways like their audience you know kind of you know a yeah. lot of folks totally yeah. so um and that's that's one thing that doing doing the entire legacy of death you know is is important you know that's why on this on this scream of perseverance tour that's coming up um you know we're, we're in many cities we're doing two nights and the first night being Scream Bloody Gore in its entirety. And then, you know, you know, tracks from leprosy and and spiritual healing. Um, you know, you we cover the brutal night for people. And right. then the second night, it's gonna be, you know, sound of perseverance in its entirety, and then human individual symbolic cuts. And so it's going to be a pair of great nights. And I, I think as a death fan, you know, fuck, I'd want to see that, you know, these, these oh, guys yeah. who play the hell out of this material doing, I don't know, uh, something like 30 something songs over the course of two nights, you know, and so yeah. 30 different songs. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, that spans that entire, you know, the entire catalog, the death catalog. That's just what well, it's a dream come true. Yeah, it's for me is the only way to do it. You know, you yeah. have to, you have to do every, every something off every album. Absolutely, yeah. you know. Totally. Now, you know, I I saw a video uh, of you guys and Steve's plan. Like, I think it's like six string bass. Uh, oh. You know, it's just and and I've seen him play a three string. Uh, you know, he's and and he's fretless a lot. I don't know if all the time, but most of all the, the time. Yeah, all the time. All Right, uh, which you know, it's just it's just tremendous to watch. It's so great, um, and I know you want to stay true to the sound that Death was producing at the time 
of, you know, like Screen Bloody Gore to, you know, individual. Uh, and I see these different instruments. Will he change what he's playing to match what was done at the time of each record? That is a good question because I can tell you, for one, I am doing that. I'm trying to, since we are like with those albums, because Chuck always gave us pretty, pretty free reign. Like, like you know, when when we were starting to rehearse for the individual thought patterns era touring, Stevie D and myself, um, it, it you know, I, I had asked Chuck, do you want me to, you know, how do you want me to approach the early material, you know, the the leprosy, and because I knew human. That material, Sean stuff, I was going to try to emulate as best as I could. Totally. I always try to pay honor to, to Sean's magnificent drumming on that record. And it's really fun to play, to be able to nail all these whacked out weirdo parts. Yeah, <laughs> really fun. Um, and, you know, the, the earlier material was, you know, it wasn't, it, you know, it, it, it was it was just a, it was its own thing, you know, it, it obviously a little more direct approach, you know, a little more simplified right. approach. And so Chuck, do you want me to add any flavorings, you know, like, you know, like right. Sean type stuff and Chuck was like, do your thing, just make it your own, you know, go sick, go nuts. That's, he used to say that all the time. And, um, and so we got to take a lot of liberties with the early, with the earlier stuff. And so on this, on these nights, I'm trying to stick as close as I can to the albums, um, th how they were recorded. I'm trying to play Billy's parts like Billy did. I mean, we have years and years and years of me taking a lot of liberties. So I'm trying to shave in the, the actual album versions of, you know, songs from Leprosy, songs from Spiritual Healing, Chris Reifert's parts on scream bloody gore i'm trying to emulate those i'm trying to bring a, a real you know like i'm it's it, it's two different nights of playing you got the technical night on night right. two okay go crazy go nuts so the first night is like be the caveman you know be that right. adamant drummer that that everybody was back in those days so try to follow as much as you can the, the album version so I, I i'm trying to so that's that's what i'm trying to do so and for steve like Stevie D is Stevie F and D. He gets to do whatever the heck he wants. And, you know, that's why that three string, we we, we call the, the five string, we call that the smart bass. So therefore we call the, th the three string, the dumb bass. <laughs> and that's, I love it because that's just Stevie D just kind of, you know, poking fun at the, at the planet. Like, you know, why do I do this? Because I can yeah, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I, I have faith that he can make any of that sound amazing. <laughs> give him three, does. give him six. It doesn't right? matter. You know, absolutely. He, he is something else, man. And you know, and listening to him, I you know, I had a deep respect. Uh, watching him is a whole other thing. Uh, you know, right? he, wow. Uh, people, they, you can't miss this this show. Uh, this is. Just top-notch musicians all around uh, in this band. It's really, really great, man. Um, tell me, you know, have you have you thought about writing original music as this Death to All lineup? Uh, you know, in the same flavor of as Death. If Death was together to make another record, uh, you know, with original songs, have you thought about that? Well, that that's a great question, and. We haven't given it too too much thought. A lot of times because our schedules are just nuts. Like my schedule is nuts <laughs> until deep into 25. So um, trying to carve out some time to do something like that would be a challenge. But it's kind of like, um, you know, how would we, I, I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to try to impugn upon the legacy of, of Chuck and what he did with, with death. So I guess if we, you know, in the, in the wildest terms of it or the wildest dreams or whatever, if we were to try a record or something, it would have to be music inspired by death. And 
right. you know, I know between Bobby, Steve, myself, and, and Max, we could all probably write some stuff. But then what happens is where does the inspired by start to drift into the, well, this sounds remarkably like, like that right. drift that we've done before. And, you know, that's one thing about Chuck and his style. You you do hear his riffs pop up on this album and then his, the same riff on another album, then another album, then another album. When you are the essentially the sole writer, that's going to happen. You know, it, right. it will happen. But, uh, you know, so that's why it would be challenging. And if anybody could pull it off, it would be the guys in death to all. Absolutely. So, Total. but I suppose never say never, but you know, I guess that would be maybe a concept we would circle back on at some point, but it's never, we've never even talked about it really, you know, like maybe the other three guys have, but we've never sat down and said, Hey guys, should we? It's like, right. you know, this, this is, this is just a really wonderful project as is. So yes. if it ain't broke, don't break it. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, you know, and I look at I look at the Death Tall logo, like on your shirt, uh, right. and you know you have the Death kind of logo in there, and I and mm -hmm. of course my you know my adult mind came into play where. Was there a, you know, is that something you had to get permission to use? Uh, you know, same with doing the songs and going out as Death to All uh, in Chuck's estate. Uh, was there any problems in doing that? Not at all. As a matter of fact, you know, we're, we're, we're in a lot of contact with, with, with Christopher Steele, with, with Chuck's family and things. So, you know, because um, we, we've all known each other for so many years, you right. know, and, and Chris was a, like an eight year old young man when we started hanging out. And so, you know, Chris, who was involved in the, in the you know, like death official, you know, social media and stuff. And I've, I've chatted with Chris and, and yeah, we want to do this correctly. We want to come correct. So, and Chris right. was like, Hey, we, we really appreciate all that you guys are doing. And like, and, you know, I had mentioned that, you know, we, we just really, we, we like, we really want to pay respect to, to Chuck's memory and his, legacy and, and stuff and you know on, on that conversation chris said hey wait a minute one second you guys are as important to this legacy as well you guys are very important so you're paying it you, you know you're paying tribute to your own legacy because you guys were a very important part of this i was i was so touched when he said that it's like well, geez, yeah. thank you chris i mean he's coming directly from the family and yeah. that, that was very nice to hear that he's like hey wait a minute Chuck, of course. However, you guys as well. You know, so I'm like, wow, that's that that is very cool. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we. This is all to keep Chuck's memory alive, and they're they're well aware of it, and so they they they, they they are backing everything we do. When we when we do something cool, they'll post it on their official stuff, and and you know, we we try to stay in in close enough contact to where um you know they they understand our intent you know yeah. pretty much you yeah know, so I'm, I'm sure it's greatly appreciated because it is a beautiful tribute uh it's uh, it's a really great representation of of his work uh for sure um okay. it's been involved with so many great bands over the years uh so much complex music uh what's been the biggest challenge for for you musically this is this the music you play is it's all so it, it's it's so complex and musical and challenging uh you know and the things that strike me are you know the strapping young lad devin townsend era stuff uh right. really really just complex rhythms and you know time signatures and things like that uh has there been one particular thing that's really challenged you more than anything else um, well, it, at, for a long time, that was um, my project mechanism from from the Vancouver area, which I featured on my first DVD, uh, The Atomic Clock, and I featured a lot of their music, and that was very challenging for me because um, the the man who wrote it, Chris Schultz, he he came to me in Vancouver and he said, 
I've written an album's worth of material with your drumming in mind. I wrote this for you. You know, would you be interested in doing it? And I was like, what? you know, that sounds pretty uh, very intriguing. So let's hear it. And it was so complicated to me, <laughs> you know, and this is back in like 1999 that we started putting this project together and the album didn't come out until 2009. We recorded it in 2000, 2003 and, you know, it's very technical and, but it's really killer. Uh, you might be able to find it on, you can find it on like Spotify and iTunes and that sort of thing. Definitely YouTube. Um, and all the Devon stuff, you know, there was so much that was challenging about about the dev material. And that leads me to this album that is coming out in one month from now. It's coming out in May, on May 10th. And that is with, um, that is with a project with Bear McCreary. If you might be familiar with his name, uh, some people are, some people not so much, but um, he does, he's a soundtrack writer, you know, a scorer for movies and film and TV. And like, for instance, he does, uh, he does all the music for The Walking Dead. Wow. And all the music for the new Lord of, uh, Lord of the Rings on Amazon Prime. He does all the music for that. Wow. He's done a whole ton of movies. He did the Metalocalypse Clock Opera. Um, you know, the, the Doomstar Requiem. And that was like more or less the first time we worked together. Uh, we did the Godzilla King of the Monsters movie together. We did some of that together. Awesome. And um, he is also a very severe metalhead. And he has written, I, I'm i serious. This is the best album I've ever been involved in. You wow. know, it is Wow. Being amazing it's called the singularity there's a couple tracks out they, they're 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 doing the you know the the before the album comes out kind of release of singles and things like that yeah. check the social medias and stuff that's but there's a couple of songs i mean and just the list of musicians that are involved in in bear's project i mean it is a laundry list of who's who and killer players and and you know it ranges from, you know, Serge Tankian from System of a Down, uh, uh, you know, Slash, Corey Taylor, wow. Jens from, from Meshuga, Rufus Wainwright, wow. Kim Thiel, Scott Ian, Lara Christine, um, uh, Brendan Small, Brian Beller, you know, uh, wow. John Avila from Oingo Boingo, Steve Bartek from Oingo Boingo, holy moly. Like, wow. I mean, it is, wow. it, it is an album that runs the gamut. It, it's, it is very, very challenging. I mean, there are some songs on there that it, it flat out took me 10 months to learn this thing. Wow. wow. And, you know, and, and so it's a, it is a 22, 23 song record. I remember we wow. recorded about 23 songs. And just the scope of this thing is really over the top and amazing. It is, it is one of those albums that, you know, those albums that, that make you laugh when you're listening to them because yeah. it's so intense or so heavy. You're like, listen to what's happening there. It is definitely yeah. one of those albums. Man. Ah, that's cool. That's cool. Wow. If it, if it took you that long, it's, uh, it's gotta be something way out there because you've, done so many things at the last minute uh you know so many things you do start with hey dude we're in a bind you know can you help us out <laughs> uh those last minute challenging gigs uh you know that is uh, that's what you do you know that's that's one of the things you do so well um yeah that's uh it, it's great to have the time to to work something out i'm sure <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, totally. Yeah. And that's one thing is that bears, bears, writing. It's it's just every song is massive. I mean, not only is it metal AF, and also just I mean, there are beautiful songs. I, we got Buck Dharma playing a lead on this thing, wow. you know, and, and he's going to be joining us on stage. We got a we got a show in a in a month. Yeah, and you know, there's going to be some surprise guests and stuff. So um, that's going to be pretty darn awesome. And um 
you know, there's just, I mean, definitely, I would strongly suggest anybody, everybody, check this album out when it comes out. You know, um, it will it will trip you out and blow your mind. It, it is it is a very weighty, gigantic sounding album. It's by far the best produced album I've ever been involved in. I mean, the drums sound massive. Everything sounds gargantuan on it. So, and it's uh, it was it was mixed by Forrester Sabo, who um, he's he works with. Um, well, we learned who he was through Brian Beller. Mm -hmm. uh, he mixed the Brian Beller. Um, uh, Scenes from the Flood album, and um, and he also works with uh, that Australian band Carnival, and uh, you know Forrester is a next level next level mixer, so uh, yeah. it's it's gonna sound killer, and it is it just it's a really really fun killer record. I, I hope people check it out. Yeah. If you check it, chances are you're gonna enjoy it. So uh, you know, cool, that's exciting, man. No, yeah, totally. That's one thing I've always tried to do is everything i put out has some form of quality to it like i don't think i've ever done a record where it's like oh man that was just we phoned that one in and that was a right. stink you know that and so this is you know i'm if well, i'm known for anything i hope to be known for you know quality metal music whatever you know yeah. so and this is definitely that so excellent yeah. Somebody told me one time the only thing we really have when it had, when it all comes down to it is our legacy, uh, and you know that is so true. Uh, you know, as we get older, you know things the things we we think we want and need now don't matter when you're in your last days. All you have is you know what you've done in your life and your legacy is, and that's what lives on. Uh, so you know you have a wonderful, wonderful legacy for sure. Uh, <laughs> You keep it, you. keeping that in, intact with this it sounds like so that's a beautiful thing um you know and and you know we're so used to seeing you in the the metal genre uh you've done so many things like that um i always you know because you're so talented and and you know pr 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 with precision and and things like that you're so all these tasty things that that come into play and that's not always something you can do with this genre uh, you know especially like the death metal stuff you know it's a little mm -hmm. hard to add a little bit of flavor you do that um so i you know i think to myself what would gene hoagland be like you know, on a jazz record or a funk record uh, right you know, uh, have you ever thought about doing something like that? Just a simple pop record where you can, you know, do little tasteful things or, you know, anything like that. Is the, has that ever crossed your mind? You know, I remember being, I, I absolutely, you know, and I, uh, I did a project. God, it was, it was 15 something years ago, 20 years ago, something like that. Um, for, uh, a kind of a power pop artist based out of Chicago. And that was really good stuff. I learned it kind of on the fly and it was very cool material, very catchy, really good. Well, and, that's where I am. I sit in Chicago right now, actually. Oh, that was good. <laughs> yeah. Kick ass, man. What band was that? There was no, it never got released. So, oh. yeah. So it just never, never came to fruition. But that was really fun to do because it was, uh, you know, it was a pretty quick project. And hey, man, you know, like, can you learn, you know, can you put some drums to this? And, you know, it was a bunch of material that didn't have drums. I put some drums to it and it came up really good. Um, and, you know, one thing I, I, I want to release on my YouTube channel at some point is um, a few years back, um, our, our dear departed friend, Mr. Dom Famularo, he, he's a drum clinician, legendary drum clinician, amazing ambassador for drums and he he passed away in very late 2023 but a few years back uh, you know it's kind of like towards the end of the pandemic kind of thing um he had reached out and asked me to be a part of this project a whole lot of drummers were part of this project it was um or um it was for harry chapin you know the the cats in the credit guy he's got a foundation called why hunger and um it was just a, a, 
a song to just try to bring some spotlight to, to their foundation. And it was the song Come Together by the Beatles. Um, but it was a really, it was like a seven minute, like journey of, of, of approaches, you know? Um, and I remember, it was it was just something where where Dom had reached out and said, "Hey, we're we're appealing to a whole ton of drummers." Like it's out on YouTube, um, you know, everybody from Ringo Starr to you know just you name it. Everybody, you know, every every drummer on the planet is going to be on this song doing a quick little drum solo. Would you want to you know jump in on this? And I was like, "Yeah, sure, man." And so what I did is they sent the track. And I learned the track. I don't read music or anything, so it for me to learn somebody else's stuff, I have to listen to it. And just I'm 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 a musical illiterate, so you know I have to <laughs> I have to listen to something over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I I I tracked a version of it, and um, God, I should I should send it to you after this, you know? Um, I want to hear it because it's. Um, I, you know, I, I, I did a, like one take of it live for my YouTube thing and, and um, it came out really, really good. And when I sent it, I sent the whole thing to Dom and he was like, you know, because they sent out charts with it, you know, musical charts. Right. And uh, he said, you played those charts like you wrote them. <laughs> After I'm like, I didn't play the charts. I, I don't read. <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? Like, this is amazing. I mean, I played it note for note for the two drummers on it were um, that were on the demo that they sent out to everybody was um, one of them was uh, Greg Bissonette, you know, from, from oh. you know, Dave Lee Roth's band and, you know, well known guy. Um, and uh, I think the other one, um, oh, it was another well known kick ass drummer. And you know, they, I think they both, it's the song has like three giant parts to it. And, uh, you know, one's kind of a rock in the, in the vein of the original. And then it goes off into a, uh, it goes off into a funk jam, like seriously, like where you, you know, shuffle and all that really tasty shuffling. And then it kicks into this total big band, you know, where I'm playing big band kind of style. And, uh, um, yeah, it's it's a really fun song to show one's versatility, you know, and especially it's like if I'm known for being this, you know, heavy metal baboon or whatever, it's like, well, <laughs> some pretty tasty drumming over here that that will trip you out, and it's all one take, you know. There's 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 no wow. chop in the video. It's like I I started it and I finished it, you know. Wow. That kind of stuff. Wow. That's yeah. fun. Yeah, I mean, and that's, you know, that's the kind of stuff, you know, I listen to what you do, and I'm like, you know, this would be, it would be so great to have you, you know, do something like that, where you could really venture out with those tasty little bits. Uh, yeah, man. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm in the process of completing the, the, uh, the, the camera angles to it, because it was like, I was just gonna put it just, you know, one camera, like here, you know, it starts, it finishes. Right. And I thought, you know that's it's just one camera in front of the drums but we multi-cammed it and you know so cool. i've got my guy you know editing the other camera angles in and it's it's almost done but it just needs a couple little tweaks and and but yeah that, that's pretty fun so i you know that's one thing i've always wanted to be is be known for is being a chameleon being the kind of drummer where you you know you need to serve the song and being a drummer that can serve a savage metal song, kick ass, or serve a big band, you know, kind of, you know, Buddy Rich, Louis Belson kind of flavor. You uh -huh. know, you got to be, be a well-rounded drummer. Being a well-rounded drummer is much more important to me than being the fastest or having the fastest double bass or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, whatever it could be. You know, being just a drummer that can do everything and anything, that's that's really fun to me. So um, you know, that, that, that's what excites me about being a drummer. And if there is a musical legacy of mine, then I would like it to be known as that. Like, well, you know, this guy was no slouch playing other styles either, you know, cause that's, I come from an era before 
thrash metal, death metal, all that. You know, it's just like I'm, I'm, I grew up listening to all the classic rock and all that kind of stuff and all the, all the progressive rock, you know, all the Rush and Yes and mm-hmm. King Crimson and all that kind of stuff. So as well as all the classic rock, you know, so my, my chops, you know, vary from, from, you know, from piece to piece. And so that's pretty fun. Yeah, oh, it's great. You know, and I, I get that. You know, when you play, I, you know, I say to myself, this guy can play anything. <laughs> you know, there's no doubt. Uh, Death Clock's on tour. Um, April 7th to May 3rd, you're going to be part of that tour, right? I'm I'm in a hotel in Burbank, California right now, and we're rehearsing for the tomorrow's our last rehearsal. So uh, we, start the, we start the tour in like two or three days from now, four or five days from now. Yeah, we travel. I think our first show is in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, at the Alligator Farm, that is known as the, uh, you know, the House of Blues out there. Ah, cool, cool. Yeah, you got Death to All going from May twenty first to June 29th. Uh, <laughs> you're busy, yeah. busy, busy on on the road. Um, is it a, what's a different? It, it, there's it's a different thing. Uh, you know, the the music's similar. Um, you know, it's a heavy death metal type of thing right. um, but the death clock thing you know you, it's metalocalypse you have the character thing worked in there uh the, the song structures are a little bit different mm-hmm. um what's the biggest difference for you as a player from going you know to death from death clock to death to all well it's you know the the musical chops are similar, you know, you got to have a lot of fast double bass and some fast hands and, and all the, all your metal chops have to be pretty sharp. The main difference between death clock and every other band that I'm in is definitely the fact that uh, we have that screen behind us. If you've seen death clock, uh, you know about the show and we are kind of the orchestra pit band for what's happening on the screen. And we, we play, you know, I'm playing to a click track and the, the entire show is pretty much on my shoulders, you know, because I'm, it's all I got, synced up, right? it is all synced up. And oh. the part that is the most where, where my responsibility has to come into play is, um, is, well, first of all, you know, I got to nail every part every night, never go off the click, which I'm, I'm pretty good with the click. That's, that's always easy. Right. But there are times when you do have a whatever kind of malfunction to where you are not getting the click track right at the top of the show. Right. So, you know, there's times when I've had to play, you know, two, three songs with no click track. And so what I've done for myself now is I have a monitor you know, with, with the video screen, what's happening back there to this, and they cut everything on the ones, you know? Right. So, and I have the, the show memorized so much that if that thing ever goes down, I could turn to the monitor and use that, you know, like, okay, here's. It's like a visual know, click track. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. And there was times when I didn't, I didn't have that little monitor, you know, so <laughs> I make sure to, and it, it, it comes in handy because there are times when it's like, holy crap, you know, we're not getting, you know, the show's starting, you know, the, the intro tape is done. Those shows kicking and it's like, I don't have a click track, you know, oh, so, man. Wow. so that, that's the thing. So, um, yeah. and you, you really, and that is where you got to put your clock to work, you know, because there were so many times when I didn't have that video, I had to go from memory. And that's one thing about when you're playing live, you got the adrenaline going, you always wanted to kick it up a notch, you know? So I've, I've had to learn a lot over the years, like, God, you got to just remain calm. Don't get too hyper because you're freaking out because there's no click tracking. So am I in the right place or, you know, just, just playing. (laughs) Your endorphins kick in when you're not being given that click track, and so your your anxiety level goes up because you got you know yeah. five thousand people out there that you know ten thousand people that you know they they don't know what you got to go through. They just they paid their money and they want to see the show kind right. of things. Right, um, right, oh, wow. And so wow. You got to show up, you know, kind yeah. of things. 
there you go. So the responsibility is on my shoulders. And when it comes to death to all, it's just fun. Yeah. It is just fun. Death Clock is super fun as well. We have a great time. I mean, Brendan, Brendan is one of the best guys I've ever worked with. I've always said that I love Brendan and, you know, I'm, I'm there for him at all, all points, you know, cause he's always been there for me as well. So, um, and that's something that's sometimes rare in this industry, you know? So, um, and you know, both bands are very, very fun in, in many different ways. And, both are very lighthearted because we are pretty with death to all. We are a pretty lighthearted band on stage. You know, we have a lot of fun doing this and it shows, you know, like watch the tubes, man. You see Stevie D in Max's ear for half the set, just like trying to throw him off. Like his, <laughs> his face is right up to Max's ear. And you know, he Stuff at Max is babbling at him, and Max, you know, just has to stay concentrating. And you know, <laughs> like, dude, I'm playing it up in song. God, leave me alone. You know, he never gets to do that. You know, it's it's pretty fun. Bobby and Stevie D play off each other all the time, and just it's 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 a lot of antics on stage. But it's a great time. We're you know, you're there to have a good time. We're Absolutely. definitely gonna have a good time. So let's all have a great time together kind of thing you know so i've always said that at a at a show you know it doesn't have to be perfect all the time as if the band is having fun that is infectious absolutely uh, you know you go to have fun uh you know when the band's super tight that's great uh you know but the band has to have fun uh you know i want to see a band having fun that makes it fun for me for sure and one thing that we're fortunate with both bands is that the 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 caliber of players involved, you know, I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about everybody's like, there's a lot, there's a lot of fun and it's also tight. You know, that's the one thing about death to all is like, we listen back to some of the, you know, some of the, the recordings every night, you know, kind of thing. And my God, we could release a live album every single night. It is that incredibly tight, you know, and death clock as well. I mean, tight players are we release a new record every night if we want a live album you know and i see the bands do that a lot of times they will we just recorded the show give us a half hour after the show we'll get that uploaded and then you get to take right. tonight's show home with you you know God, yep. that's something considered totally and you, you know that's a lot of pressure you got to be a great band to do stuff like that uh right. you know, and i've had most of death clock on the show uh brian beller's just an amazing you know i mean it's just crazy nearly brosh uh a great player right. Uh, you know, I mean, this is, you know, the caliber of player is is tremendous for sure. Right, absolutely, Don too. Cool. Now, you know, you were, you're not 20 years old anymore. You're playing stuff that's super physical. Uh, you know, it is a workout. It is cardio. You get you. It's yeah. You know. Um, what kind of fitness routine? Uh, how do you keep this up? You know, I'm 55. Uh, I can't imagine playing stuff like this. Uh, it's just, you know, out of breath at the end of the set, man. Uh, it's it, how do you, What do you do to keep that body in shape and to keep going and be able to do this every night, night after night? Well, I guess a number of years ago, I quit all extracurricular activities. I don't... I, I don't drink anymore and I, I never got into drugs, you know, and I used to, I used to smoke a little pot. Now I don't even do that. I'm an F and T totaler these days that yeah. I've been for the last couple of years. And that helps. <laughs> yeah, man. And so, you know, waking up feeling good every, every morning and it, it's, it's, it's here, you know, my, my entire, everything about drums, you know, I've always said drums are 90% mental, 10% physical. And, you know, it's just, if you can think it, you can do it. And so, uh, you know, I was definitely in my early, early, when I was a teenager and I was like trying to figure out how do I play double bass this fast as I'm supposed to be playing. It's like, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> mantra for forever. Mantra, I guess. And, um, you know, so now I feel younger than ever. And, and, you know, I put on a little bit of weight back then, but I've lost a hundred and 80 pounds, you know, since my, my 
my biggest weight. I was 410. Then I got down to, uh, you know, down to about the 250 sort of area now. And I got down to 224, I think, when I was recording the Bear record. And, um, um, but I, one thing I have noticed is the only thing, because I feel like a baby. I'm 56 years old, but I feel half that age. I feel 27, 28 kind of thing, seriously. Right. And, you know, it's aging is such a, it's in your mind, man. It is, you know, so many guys I know that are my age and older and even younger just going, oh my God, I'm so old. And I'll, I'll stop <laughs> all of them and say, cut that shit right now. You're not old. You're a baby. You know, you're an epping baby. You're, you're, you're 54 years old. You're a child. Like, come on, man. Like you're 54 now. Like when we were young, when we were like eight, nine, 10 and our grandparents were in their fifties. I mean, they look like they were in their night. <laughs> right. 50 is not, you know, that's nothing anymore. So uh, this is the only thing I've ever known. This is the only life I've ever known. The only, I've, I've never done anything else other than tour and put out albums, you know? So this is, there's nothing different for me. And that's what I was going to say. The one thing that I have noticed from being of, you know, being, uh, having experience, you know, being more experienced than some of the younger dudes um, is I do need to keep my chops up. Like back in the day, I could go six months without playing and sit on the kit and get, get back pretty darn quick these days. And maybe, maybe this is mental. Maybe this is me just telling myself that dude, you have to keep your chops up or else they're going to go away. Um, like I can't go for much more than like a couple of weeks or three weeks. Um, and they come back real quick, but I would not want to give it like two months, you know, like where I got to go do something like that. You're only going to play guitar for two months, you know, kind of thing. Like, you know, as, as a drummer, I'm okay. But as a thrash metal guitarist, I rip like, <laughs> destroying guitarists, you know? So, uh, but, you know, even when I am having to concentrate on playing guitar, like I'm writing a new album for something, um, I still have to get down to the studio and jam. You know, that's one thing I noticed. And so that was one thing when I was in the during the pandemic, um, when that thing hit, I was like, how am I going to keep my chops up? So I became a live streamer on Twitch and um that was I, I essentially started that live stream in order to force myself to get down to the studio on a regular basis because I I I refer to myself as as the legend of lethargy. Um because I'm a lazy dude, man. If I don't have to do <laughs> something, I ain't gonna do it. And so it's like, okay, make yourself have to go down and play drums every day. So I was down there. I was streaming for a month straight every single day, you know, or I was streaming like four times, five times a week, playing three, four hours of drums. Awesome. And I utilize drums as cardio, you know, and, and yeah. I utilize weights with drums. I, I, I still wear the leg weights. I mean, it's pretty, pretty well-known concept. I wear leg weights when I play drums and I, I wear leg weights while I play drums and that's a great way to keep your, you know, keep your muscles going. And, and I, I go to the gym, I work out and, and, you know, try to keep my, my muscles ready to go, you know, because, you know, as, as you reach an advanced age, utilize everything you can to give yourself that edge, you know, and this is something that I've, I've mentioned before. Um, I, I, fully completely intend to be doing this in my seventies, in my eighties. And, and, you know, it's not going to be something like where it's like, Oh, that's adorable. He still plays some drums. No, I mean like bringing it, you know? So yeah. I figure I could get away with this kind of carriage that I have at the moment. Um, but in my seventies, who knows if I could get away with this kind of, you know, like, whatever whatever gut i got so right. i intend to be like cut and ripped in my 70s so i'm just like this destructive force you know like where it's like holy crap hogan is still bringing it you know 
And that's great. Back in you know when I when I was doing strapping and and all the bands that I was yeah. with at that time playing like severe amounts of double bass. Yeah. At a time when double bass was not hip, you know, like in the in the nineties, like you know the early nineties when grunge came around and all of a sudden playing lead guitar is cool anymore. Right. All these drummers, these that had big drum sets, double basses, they all moved down to like a five piece kit, single bass, double bass pedal for their little, and they stopped playing double bass. Somebody had pointed out to me at that time, they were, they had said, a lot of your peers, you know, they, they, first of all, they don't do the amount of, of they aren't as prolific as you are, um, right. you know, for every, one album that one of your peers might put out, you put out like seven or eight all <laughs> flying double bass. Somebody <laughs> pointed out just they 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 were like there this could be the possibility that you have played more double bass than anybody else on the planet. Mm -hmm. Whoa, I never Total. even thought of that. it's it's you know, but that could well be because I never stopped playing a lot of double bass, even mm -hmm. when you know, even when it it was out of style and it was not cool, you know, you had to play some sort of BS funky new metal groove. To, you know, <laughs> right. You even saw Slayer doing new metal. Like, come on, man. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um, I never wavered, you know. So it's just. I think that's key. I, yeah, you know? absolutely. And I, I do utilize, uh, utilize drums as cardio. Totally. Like. Every night on stage, most guys have like fans and, you know, they're trying to keep themselves cool. I load myself up with neoprene. I'm wearing neoprene underneath <laughs> everything because I'm going to sweat and I won't use a fan. Um, wow. you know, unless it's like super mandatory, but I will, I will shy away from fans. I've got, I've got, five layers of neoprene stuff on under oh, my shirt, oh, you know, and I'm playing, like you see me playing in a long sleeve, you'll see it on the death clock shirt. You'll see me playing in a long sleeve shirt. I have all this neoprene stuff. I got, I got stuff drying on the you know, <laughs> chair over there and got stuff over there. I wear the bands of neoprene. I got the neoprene yeah. vest. I put on the, the long sleeve shirt that is an under armor shirt. So they're the, you know, the, the, right. the the heat shirts, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm typically sweating my my bag off every night, yep. um, in order to be cardio, you know, like yeah. cardio and just I, I, this isn't torture to me, but you know, I it could be torture to other people, you know. I torture myself on stage every night. But it's gotta feel <laughs> good. Like hauling double bass on its own is not hard and challenging enough, you know. Like <laughs> wear leg weights and you know yeah. Under Armour <laughs> and neoprene, you know. <laughs> Jeans and wear the gym. A super suit on stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We think he's, he's playing a show. He's really at the gym, you know. <laughs> I always use drums as that. You know, I played with leg weights for what years? Is twenty twenty four? I played with leg weights for. 36 wow. years now, you know, so yeah, that's it. oh, it's got to be second nature. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm always on the hunt for new, new leg weights, the new, the new hotness of leg weights, you know, I'm you, cool. you lose them like halfway through or something, right? I'll take them off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, wow. That's got to feel good. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. And, <laughs> It makes everything else super buttery. Like the first, and for the most part, most sets are designed. Most most uh, most sets are designed for um, you know. You kind of do the slow ramping up. You know, you get some challenging stuff in there. You make it, you know, you make it so the 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 really you know savage numbers are deeper in the set, and so it's really easy, man. You you know it's. Yeah, I, I've always applied, like I grew up being a baseball player, um, so I've had that athletic background, and so I've always utilized the uh, what is it? I guess maybe it's a uh, isometric exercise wearing the wearing the leg weights and the same concept as the batter's donut. Right, right. You know, 
you got Ernie Banks up there, you know, swinging a bat with a donut on it. And, uh, yeah. He's in Chicago. Right? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> Ryan, he had he had a batter's donut kind of thing. So, um, yeah, and you lose the donut, and you know the bat goes twice as fast. Yeah, exactly, and that's the same concept, and that's why you know yeah. kicking off the leg weights, you, your feet fly afterwards. So that's pretty yeah. darn fun. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, your wife, we have to touch on that, Laura Christine. Uh, she, you have to touch on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's she, part of the planet right now. Well, she is one talented lady uh, in many mm-hmm. aspects, uh, an, an amazing guitar player, uh, but she's into health and nutrition as well. So uh-huh. that's that has to be a huge uh well support if anything but a help in in keeping up your health and nutrition as well she is the reason why i'm here flat out i would awesome. not be here without laura christine 100 percent. so um her. and that was one thing that ha- yeah absolutely you know she's she's very health minded and um and she had the knowledge to be health minded, you know, like, cause I remember back when I was in death, I, I lost, um, I think I lost 127 pounds, but I did it very, very improperly. And so I gave myself diabetes from, um, I remember going fat free and sugar free. But at that time there was all the aspartame and fake sugars and things. And, and, um, well, I wasn't sugar free, but it was, yeah, fat free, high in sugar. That's what happened, you know? Yeah. And so I gave myself diabetes by trying to lose weight. I lost weight, but gave myself diabetes. And so I had diabetes for a number of years. And one time I got back from a run and Lara had, it was a South American run and we ate at a chuhascaria every single day. And for those who know what a chuhascaria is, those are the Brazilian meat pits where they bring you, you know, meat on the skewer and they carve yes. it for you and all that kind of stuff. Uh oh, getting an SOS. What am I doing here? Why is this say SOS? I'm trying to see it on my phone. I just got. Uh oh. Uh, it could be like Song of Salvation, Death Clock. I think. Uh, am I? Ah, there we go. <laughs> Maybe I, I a reminder just popped up on my phone. I'm like, well, what does SOS mean? Because um, that's one of the songs in the new set list for Death Clock. Cool. But, um, I came back and I had ballooned up. I gained about like 25 pounds. We were gone for like two weeks, <laughs> and so and, and she had. And when I came back, she had said, "Hey, Oakland, you know." I've, I've seen you fluff up when you get, you know, when you go on the road and I've, I've seen you fluff up, but damn dude, like shoot, you, you really put it on on this one. I had a doctor's appointment and I went to the doctor, um, just, you know, they just a checkup kind of thing. And my doctor at the time told me, he's like, you know what? Um, you really need to make a change or else, um, You know, your numbers are telling us that if you do not change something pretty drastically, and at this point I was 410 pounds, um, uh, he was like, if you don't make a change, like by the next time we're scheduled to see each other, we're going to have to have you start jabbing, jabbing insulin. Mm. And I was like, oh man, there's no way I'm doing that. I came home, I told Laura about it and she's like, all right, mf I've been quiet for the last like couple of years here, but now here's here's how it's going to be. I'm going to put you on a plan. You know, you're you're going to do what I tell you. You're going to eat what I tell you. We're going to detox the hell out of you. And at the end of this, in, in three to six months, you're not going to have diabetes anymore. And uh, you're also going to start losing a lot of weight. And I'm like, Okay, anything to keep myself from jabbing insulin? Okay, yep. all right, Absolutely. baby, let's go for it. And I started dripping pounds instantly. Everything she said was correct. Three months later, I didn't. Diabetes is the easiest thing to get rid of. If you have that type two, you know, you yep. gave it to yourself. You can, you can get rid of it. Just start yep. eating healthy. So I eat a lot of salads and everything's super healthy. And so I flat out have Laura Christine to thank for, for me being on the on this planet. 
all my friends, all my associates, they all say the same thing to her. Like, you know, thank you for keeping Hoagland on here. And, you know, her, her reasoning was she's like, she's like, dude, you're like a dime bag. You're like a, you know, you're, you're a legend. We got to keep you on this planet, man, just for, for metals sake. Absolutely. And Absolutely. so I'm like, okay, well, I'm all about it. So yeah, she's, she's, she's my, my health guru. That's why I love being on the road with her because you know, when I'm not on the road with her, I eat like a fool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's her that, that keeps me, keeps me in line. So that's why it's great. But now we're in some projects together. You know, she's involved in the bear project and of course with dark angel. So right. I eat pretty healthy when I'm out on the road with dark angel. So <laughs> that's pretty good. We do death talk and stuff together. You know, that, that, hell, I'm eating a lot of salads. So I love I back that. thank you, Laura. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's great to have you, Gene. Uh, you know, I want to respect your time. Thank you so much, man. Uh, do you keep a journal? Do you keep a journal on the road? No, I don't. Like, I oh. don't do much. Like, I I don't even, like, you know, my, my, my management is always telling me, you know, send us content, you know, like, take pictures of things, do things, write a little <laughs> blurb for things and we'll come up with your hashtags for you and all that kind of stuff and i still can't do that man <laughs> i do what i can thank god for my drum tech jeff thumper um because he'll he'll be the one going around taking pictures of things and, and you know sending them to the management and letting them post for me and stuff but yeah journals and things i'm i, I i'm serious I, i'm out there living life and to, in order to try to stop and document it and start like, okay, you know, I am not so-and-so. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I, I sit here and I think, you know, you your eyes have seen so much and you've played with so many just wonderful people and musicians and, and you know, such a great legacy that you have. Uh, I would love to read about all of those stories, you know. Uh, have you ever thought about writing it down? You know, I, I remember around the symbolic era, you know, somebody had said, dude, you know, like, do you ever think about writing a book? And I was like, seriously, sure. Yeah. But trying to find the time for one. And these days, I mean, you have, I, I have a transcriber or whatever, a dick, a dictaphone right here. Yeah, right, right. And, you know, in 1967, I was brought <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Right. You know, I, I could be taking notes down, but shoot, God, I, I'm always fascinated with people who have the time to post and, and, yeah. you know, stop what they're doing to take that picture, do all the little doodly do's to it. Like yep. I, a lot of my friends in the music industry, they, you know, you see them posting all the time. I'm like, where do you get the time for this? Like, seriously. I think I the have, same thing, man. It's like I can't even do it, and I don't. You know, I'm not on the road all the. I'm like, how are these guys doing this? I mean, right? It's crazy. Yeah. Like you, do, do you have butlers too? You <laughs> know, <laughs> yeah. they're themselves, man. There's so many times I'm watching my pal in this band. You know, I'm walking by, and they're just like, you know, and post, and there you go, kind of yeah. thing. So crazy, yeah, man. man. Crazy. Uh, tour goes from May 21st to June 29th. Uh, Death to All Band.com. We're on Facebook, Death to All Official. Uh, Gene Hoagland, thank you so much, man. I <laughs> appreciate you, you so much, man. Uh, I appreciate you, brother. Well, hey, man, I know we're playing Chicago, so come on yeah, out. Absolutely. See you in person. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Uh, we'll do it for sure. Excellent. Yeah, hit my All folks right. up. We'll be hanging. I'll right. tell you what. I'm gonna send you that. I'm gonna find the little uh, that come together thing, and I'll, I'll send it to you. And I'll post it as soon as we get it completed. This is almost complete, but uh, yeah, definitely, you, know, cool, you, you might get a kick out of it. Yeah, man. Oh, definitely, definitely. I look forward to it, man. And you know, my door's always open. I'd love to have you back on the show. And uh, anytime, my friend. friend absolutely, love to do Thank it. Thank you, man. All right, Scott. Take you care, take care. Have a great day. Thank you. See you. Bye, bye.